here's the the Bill and Melinda Gates, our world and data. And, uh, you know, what's interesting about their literature is they word things in a way that makes it seem like, for instance, the majority of soybeans are grown for livestock, which is false. But they'll also put the truth in there. So you can actually, you have to flesh it out, but the Mm. truth is there. The agricultural area use is divided into three categories, arable land. So what is arable versus non-arable? Arable land is suitable for cropping on a regular basis, whereas non-arable land is not capable of supporting cropping due to land and soil constraints, which can support crops is 28% of the global agricultural area. Permanent crops is 3% of the agricultural area, and that's like orchards. You know, the trees are permanent. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then permanent meadows and pastures, which is 69%. So you've got, and that's the, that's, this is probably where he's getting the 70%. He's so probably they're magically get, thinking that if we get rid of livestock, all the meadows and pastures will suddenly be not used anymore. Right. And that somehow is a is a benefit to us when really we've already proven tonight that managed properly, like the remember the bison example, mm-hmm. the guy was rebuilding the soil with the bison. Colorado's grasslands were once under hoof of some of the 50 million bison roaming the American plains. The bison were killed off. The plains also changed. There's a ranch here trying to heal the relationship between the grass and grazers. Here's Corey Reppenhagen. Being out here on the short grass prairie, seeing bison just grazing about, I mean, it just, it just resonates somewhere in your DNA where your body's like, yeah, this is right. This is how it used to be. Bobby Gill helps manage this 7,000 acre bison ranch near Strasburg. He's not just a rancher, he's also a researcher. And this land is a science project run by the Colorado-based Savory Institute. And what we're doing here at this ranch is showing that grassland regeneration is possible, that it is possible to have grazing herbivores, livestock on a piece of land, grazing in a way that improves the health of the land. Gill says these bison don't just walk the soil, they're part of the soil. For example, the dirt is dusty and dry in this time of severe drought, but he says the water necessary for the growth and decay of grass can be found in the belly of these beasts. And the only place that you'll find above ground out here where you have year-round available moisture is in that fourth stomach, the rumen of the livestock. He says the special stomachs of grazing animals like bison have the ability to regenerate soil health. What's good for the bison going in is good for the soil coming out. But ultimately what we want is we want this piece of manure to be broken down and fully reincorporated back into the ground. At this ranch, the amount of grass each herd eats and the amount of time each field needs to recover has been pre-calculated. Gill says the right balance between grazing and growing will regenerate this soil. He says it's a balance that was once handled by Mother Nature. Predators like gray wolves used to keep the herds moving at just the right pace. So now we come in as humans and we essentially take the place of the predators. So instead of wolves circling around them and causing them to move about, now we subdivide a ranch into pastures and we move them from one pasture to the next. And he says this method of soil regeneration is not just a trend, it's a permanent solution. This isn't just one thing that's happening in this small little microcosm right here. This is this big, huge, massive movement of land managers who are seeing that there's a better way of doing things. Yeah. So what the vegans want to do is they want to take operations like that where we're sequestering atmospheric carbon and putting it back into the soil carbon bank so that the soil can absorb water again so that we don't have hydrophobic soil causing flooding. Mm. So that's what the vegans want to do. They want to shut down these regenerative operations that are healing the earth. And they, they do that by phrasing things in a, in a very dishonest way by saying, we can reduce agricultural land use by 70% if we get rid of livestock agriculture. Yeah, but and what's so, going to repair the land? Yeah, they don't want to repair the land. They, they, they actually hate 
the earth. They hate the environment. They hate human beings. Mm. They it's hate really the animals. Friends. If they were to be honest, they'd say, well, we could reduce, you know, agricultural land use by 70%. However, I'm going to be honest with you, that is non-arable land. And the only, re the only way that we could ever make it arable, and it could be, it could be made arable, but we would need to move livestock in there hmm. and, and regenerate that soil using bison or cattle or sheep or goats. Hmm. 